Okay, good morning everybody. Dr. Hickey here with uh, the lecture material, the video material for the Chapter 9 Geologic Time section of the course. Um, during this chapter, or through this chapter, one of the main things you're learning is actually how geologists go in and date things. Um, and historically, it's happened using two different methods. One is referred to as a system called relative dating techniques or principles. Uh, and that basically looks at the relative relationships between uh, rock layers and in interpreting those things. Um, obviously, when you're in an area where you have a lot of tectonic activity, uh, that can cause some changes to these principles. And I'll talk about those as we go through. But if you have an area where the material were or are uh, configured as the materials were originally deposited or emplaced, then you can use these principles in order to tell the relative relationships. Because if you think about this, you know, if you had a column of rocks you were looking at, um, and nothing's happened to those rocks since the materials were in place, in other words, tectonics have not been at work, so they didn't overturn anything, um, then as you look at the bottom and you progressively work up section, in other words, you look from the bottom towards the top, the beds are getting consecutively younger. In other words, the stuff already had to be there at the bottom in order to put something on it, right? So I think that's pretty straightforward. So you want to kind of keep that as your frame of reference as we're working through this first part of the, uh, the presentation. The second way in which um, geologists date things is, is referred to as absolute dating. And that all came about with the discovery of radioactive uh, isotopes of the elements and determining things like the fact that these things degrade in a certain time frame and they basically use lose excuse me half their mass during that time frame so if you can establish how much of a material is originally there uh, go out and measure how much is there today you can figure and you know what the loss rate is you can go in and calculate a time based on that and we'll look at how you can use that in a pretty simplistic manner in order to do that okay so what are we going to be getting or what are you going to be getting hopefully from this material well, let's see here. <clears throat> the objectives to explain the differences between numerical and relative dates, in other words, absolute dating and relative dating principles. We'll look at the principles that are involved in, in determining the relative ages or the relative relationships between rock units. Um, we'll look, we'll discuss the different types of one of those principles, specifically something called unconformities. You'll learn to unravel a sequence of geologic events in what's referred to as a cross-section. That would be an exposure of rocks at the surface. We can see the different layers, and again, assuming that you know tectonics hasn't been at work, uh, at least in a large-scale uh, large factor, so that's overturning anything. Uh, you'd need some more experience in, in determining that before you could do that. But you'll learn to actually how to unravel one of those cross-section things. In other words, one of these pictures of an exposure of rocks where the different layers are, are, are exposed to you. Um, you'll also then, you know, we'll look at radioactive, uh, radiometric dating again, uh, how that's used to absolutely date things um, and actually give an age to things. In relative dating, we're literally establishing the relative relationships between things. You know, this unit is older or younger than another unit based on these factors. Absolute dating, you go in, you crunch the numbers, you come out with a date. You know, it gives you an approximate date on when that exists. And then the last thing we'll do very briefly is look at the geologic time scale and some features about that that you uh, will need to be familiar with um, in order to uh, complete this section of the course. Okay, so moving right along. What are the relative dating principles? Well, they include superposition, original horizontality, inclusions, cross-cutting relations, unconformities in fossil or also referred to as faunal succession. Okay. Now when we're actually applying these things, the in the cross-sections I give you in this course you'll actually be using superposition, original horizontality, cross-cutting relations and unconformities. We won't really be using inclusions or fossil faunal succession in this, but I'll tell you about what that's all about here as we work through this material so you're familiar with it. Okay, this first picture comes from the Grand Canyon, and what you're looking at is actually an example of two 
of the principles. <clears throat> As it says here, the first one is superposition. And it's well illustrated in this what's referred to as pancake type or or layer uh, geology. You know, everything's basically flat. So um, as you're looking at this sequence, and again, the assumption here is nothing's been overturned by tectonics, you know, you're getting progressively younger as we go from the deeper beds down here that are buried up to the surface beds. Okay, so, you know, the Supai group is older than the Hermit Shale. The Hermit Shale is older than the Coconino Sandstone. The Coconino Sandstone is older than the Toro Weep Formation. The Toro Weep is older than the Kaibab. That happens to be the youngest exposed here. Well, except for, you know, later on you'll realize that there's also something going up here called modern erosion, so that's really the youngest thing that's going on any soil formation that's, a, that's actually occurring at that level. The other thing that's in evidence here is, you know, this is flat. It's horizontal. That's how these rock units are pretty much deposited when they were first in place. So, you know, that tells you that there hasn't been a whole lot of disturbance here, at least as we're looking at this section at this scale. Okay, things have gone on in this region relative to the uplift of the Colorado Plateau. We're not talking about that here. What we're talking about is, again, looking at this small segment of rocks, you know that they're, original, they're in their original configuration, they're horizontal, no overturning, and we can tell something about the relative ages of these things getting younger as you go from the bottom up to the top. Very important principles. Uh, one other thing I'll also note, you know, I do intend to put these videos on YouTube, which means there's a 10 minute limit. So as I'm watching the time, I'm suddenly going to, you know, kind of say, okay, got to halt, uh, and that'll happen here in a couple of minutes, uh, and I'll, you know, get the next video ready and we'll continue on with a series of videos. It'll probably take three or four of them to complete this section of the course. Okay, the next unit. Again, we, we just left superposition and original horizontality. And on the list, you may recall the next thing that we talked about was inclusions. And this is an example of how an inclusion is formed. Here we have a little block unit. We have the exposure of two units here an intrusive igneous rock, you know, something like granite, with sedimentary rocks over it. Well, as we expose this rock unit to the surface, this sedimentary layer and some of this granitic material is actually going to start to be eroded and weathered away. Excuse me, weathered and eroded away. And when that happens, you're left with materials here at the surface. You've taken out most of the sedimentary section. And later in time, you know, maybe this block gets buried again below a sea and you start redepositing sediments. So what happens is, a couple of things. One, right at the surface, right, we have all this rough broken up stuff, the stuff that's been weathered but hasn't really been eroded yet. Okay, that's leaving big chunks of rocks there. When the next layer comes in and gets deposited on top of that, those chunks of rock, or what was the granite, actually gets included as part of this new unit sitting above it. Okay, those are referred to as inclusions. All right, very important principle. So, you know, this older granitic material is really part of this granite down here. It happens to be the weathered, you know, residuum, if you will, that actually then gets entrained in this new unit that has been deposited and formed above it. Okay, so that's called an inclusion. That's another thing that'll help you to tell what's going on. The other thing this does, <clears throat> and it actually even existed here, since igneous and metamorphic rocks are formed it under substantially different conditions than sedimentary rocks, the contact between these two things is one of the unconformities we'll be talking about. And as it tells you here, it's referred to as a nonconformity. We'll look at that in a little more detail here in a moment. We're about to move into cross-cutting relationships. But here's where I'm going to end this first video. So we'll be back with you in a moment.